So you should know how to complete your five to one progressions at this point. If you don't, please go back and review the previous lecture that shows you how to do that. Today we need to talk about how to resolve five seven to one. So with your five chord, just as a quick review, we're in the key of C, you have the notes G, B, and D. So the leading tone is a tendency tone. Remember that concept about tendency tones. It's a very important one. So the B has to resolve up to a C. If you add a seventh, such as in a five seven chord, you have a second tendency tone. So your first tendency tone is the leading tone. Your second is actually the seventh of the chord, which is also the fourth scale degree. So the seventh of the chord has to resolve down. So we now have two tendency tones that we have to pay attention to. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to actually resolve five, seven to one progressions. So let's go ahead and do one in A major. So I'm going to write my treble, my bass clef. I'm just going to create my grand staff. And I'm going to put in my key signature. I'm going to write A underneath here so I know what key I'm in. I'm going to write in my key signature. So here we have a 5-7 chord, and we want to resolve it to 1. So one of the things about resolving 5-7 to 1 is that in order to avoid faulty parallels and other voice leading issues, you have to leave out a chord member of either the 5-7 chord or the 1 chord. So if you leave out the 5th of either chord, because anytime we want to emit a chord tone, it's going to be the 5th. We don't want to emit the root because that's the foundation for the chord. We don't want to omit the third because that's a quality of the chord. And we can't omit the seventh because then it's not a seventh chord. So our only option is a fifth. So if you want to omit the fifth on the five seven chord, then what happens is you'll have a doubled root on the five seven chord with an omitted fifth. And then you'll have a tripled root for the one chord. If you want to, so let's just say omit the fifth. If you want to omit the fifth on the one chord, then what happens is you have a complete 5 7 chord. And you have a doubled root on the one chord. So that's really how you have to approach this. So the 5 7 to 1 progression. In the key of A, let's go ahead and make the 5-7 chord complete. I'm just going to write C underneath it, and the 1 chord incomplete. So I'll write a 1. Maybe do this in a different color so it's not confusing. All right. So the first thing we do is we put in our baseline. So the fifth scale degree of A is E. So I'm going to put an E here. And then the first scale degree of A, obviously, is A. So we're going to put our A there. So now I'm going to deal with my leading tone. So that's going to be your G sharp. So the G sharp, I'm going to go and put up here in the alto. It has to resolve by step right here. So anytime you do this, I want you to write your tendency tones in and draw a line to indicate how they're resolving. That's important because it really makes you think about your resolutions of tendency tones, an important concept. So let's go ahead and deal with our next chord member as well, the next tendency tone, which is a seventh. So an E7 chord has notes E, G sharp, B, and D. So I need to put my D, I'm just going to put it up here in the soprano, and it's going to resolve down by step to the C sharp. And I'm just going to write seven to indicate that is the seventh of the chord. Now, the voicing I chose here is not mandatory. You can use any voicing you want. The way I've actually voiced this is going to be an imperfect authentic cadence because the C sharp is not scale degree one. But just understand that you can voice these any way you wish. So then from five seven to one we have the notes E, G sharp. We're missing a B and a D. 
Since I said I wanted to make the 5-7 chord complete, I have to put my B in. And then that is just going to resolve down so I can double the root. And we have a 1 chord there. It goes down to the A. So let's go ahead and do this as if we're going to write, we're going to turn it around. The 5-7 chord is going to be incomplete. The 1 chord is going to be complete. So again, we're going to put in our base. E goes up to A. I still need to resolve my leading tone, so this is going to stay the same. I still need to resolve my seventh, so that's going to stay the same. So all the voices have effectively stayed the same. Now what you have here is you have the root of the one chord and the third. So what that means is we need to have an incomplete 5-7. So I've got E, G sharp, the B is left out, which is good, and D. But I need to have one more chord tone. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to double my root and put my E there. So then in order to make this one chord complete, I just hold that E over. So we have a common tone. I want you to label that CT for common tone. So to recap, when moving from 5-7 to 1, one of the chords has to be incomplete. The 5-7 chord, if it's complete, it ends up having a doubled root for the 5-7 chord and a tripled root for the 1 chord. If you want the 1 chord to be complete, then you have a doubled root on the 1 chord and a complete 5-7 chord. So now we're going to talk about how to do the inversions. So you've got first, second, and third inversion to worry about. So let's go ahead and do a first inversion chord. We're going to do it in E flat. One of the things to note about inversions is that you can use all chord members for the 5-7 chord when you do an inversion. And in fact, you need to use all the chord members. It's not like the 5-7 chord where we have to leave out a chord tone. With inversions, we don't have issues with faulty voice leading. So we are allowed to use every chord member. So let's go ahead and do key B flat. Let's do a five, six, five to one. And if you don't know your inversions or seven chords, you need to start practicing those. It's very important you know your inversions. So let's put in our key signature. You're gonna find something that, that happens with all of your inversions. With every single inversion, first, second, or third, you're going to have a common tone. So let's go ahead and fill out our bass line. So we're in first inversion here, which means a third of the chord has to be in the bass. So normally B flat would be the root. So we need to have that D in the bass because that is a third of your five, seven chord. And then this one indicates that we're gonna have an E flat here. And again, if you need to write out your chord members and then cross them off as you go, as we did with the triads, that's perfectly fine. So then let's go ahead and put our B flat in here so that we don't make a mistake. So the root of the 5-6-5 five, chord is going to hold over. That's your common tone between these two chords. So all we do is we just hold that root of the 5 chord over to the 1 chord. So now we've got our B flat and our D. The D is a leading tone. So the leading tone is already resolved for us. So now we need to put in an F. This is the fifth of the chord. And then we're going to put in the seventh. So I'm gonna go ahead and resolve the seventh first because that kind of boxes us in so we only have one option for the fifth of the chord. So the seventh has to resolve down so I don't even know really you have to think about it. I just know the seventh is coming down to a G. So now we look at our one chord. We have an E flat, a G, and a B flat. That's a complete chord, but we still need to fill in the alto voice. So we want to double that root. Remember, we always try and double that root. So that's how you do the five, six, five to one. So let's go ahead and do a second inversion triad. Let's do this one. Let's go back to A. So we have a five, four, three, moving to a one chord. So I'm gonna put in my key signature. I 
Okay, so five, four, three, moving to one. That means the fifth of the chord is going to be in the bass. So the A chord is going to be E, G sharp, B, and D. So we need to have a B in the bass. So once I put my B in the bass, we're gonna go back to this old method. We're just gonna cross it off our chord. So there's your B in the bass. The one chord is in root position, so the B comes right down to the A. So I've taken care of that. Remember, we're going to want to double that A. So I'm gonna cross off one of my A's. So now I'm going to deal with the root of the chord and the third of the chord to make sure we get those in there. So I need an E and a G sharp. So I'm gonna put my E up here. And remember that is the root of the chord. So we're just gonna hold that over because it's a common tone. So that voice is already filled in for us. And then I'm going to fill in my G sharp. And I'm gonna put my G sharp here in the tenor. So the G sharp is the leading tone. And it has to resolve up to the A. So cross off my G sharp, my E, cross off my other A. So now I've doubled the root of my chord and we're in good shape so far. So the only thing left to deal with is the D. So I'm gonna put the D up here in the soprano and I'm gonna bring it down by step to the C sharp. So there's my seventh. So there's one more. And this one's a little bit weird. We're gonna do this one in E major. So why is this one a little bit weird? I'm not gonna tell you exactly why it's weird right now. I want you to think about what the chord member is in the bass of the 542. So go ahead and pause this video for about five, or for as long as it takes for you to figure out why this progression might be a little bit weird. We have to do something special with the one chord. So with a 5-4-2 chord, I'm going to give you the answer now. The seventh has to be in the bass. So what does that mean for the one chord? The seventh is a tendency tone. It has to resolve down, correct? So that means that the root of the one chord can't be in the bass. So this has to be a 1-6 chord. So that's just a unique situation with a 5-4-2. One thing I will mention about the 5-4-3 is that you can have a 1-6 chord because you can still move by step there and there's no tendency tone. For the 5-6-5 five, five to 1, it needs to be, the 1 chord needs to be in root position because of the leading tone. So we've already filled out our A, and I'm going to put in our 1 chord here. So for the 1 chord, we still want to double the root. So I've got a G sharp already taken care of. So we took out our A and our G sharp. So let's go ahead and start at the root of the chord now. So I'm gonna put my B right here. I'm gonna cross that off. And remember, the B is your common tone. So just hold that over. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna to go to my D sharp, which is the leading tone. And I'm gonna put the D sharp in the soprano so we can have a strong, imperfect, authentic cadence. This is actually a contrapuntal cadence because it's moving by step in the bass. So our seventh is resolving up by step. We're in good shape there. And then I'm going to put in my remaining chord tones. Got my D sharp, got my E. So now I need an F sharp and an E. So I'm gonna put the F sharp here in the alto and I'm just going to resolve it down to the E there. So that's how you do chords if there are no versions. Okay, so we've got one last thing to talk about. I'm going to show you how to connect predominant, which is the four, oops, the four or the two, to 
dominant harmonies. So let's do one in D. Now the main thing about connecting predominant to dominant harmonies is you want to use contrary motion between as many of the upper voices and the bass as you can. Sometimes you're going to have oblique motion. But let's go ahead and do one in D major. Here's F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and C sharp. And I'm going to write my Roman numerals down here. So four to five. So these are basically half cadences, and this is how the phrase ended. So for four to five, I just have to put my bass note here. That's going to be a G. And it's just going to move up to A, and that's dictated by the Roman numerals. So let's fill in the rest of the chord. So I've got a G. I need to double the root. So I'm going to put my other root here. I need a B. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And then I'm going to have a D. So I'm going to put that here. Now I did this so that I can have contrary motion to the bass. So I have an A, a C sharp, and an E that I need to deal with now. And remember the A has to be doubled. So the best option to double the A is to actually just take that B and move it down to the A. So I've got my A, now I need a C sharp. So G is not gonna move to C sharp because that'd be a leap. So my next best option is for D to move down to C sharp, which means, and this happens with half cadences, I've got A, C sharp, I need an E, we're gonna have to skip down a third. And that's pretty common when you're moving from a four chord or a two chord to a five chord. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do another one. Let's do a two, six to five. And let's do the key of F. Keep it nice and simple. Okay, so the two, six to five. Let's go ahead and put the third of our two chord in the bass, which is going to be a B flat. And then just follow their own numerals and get your five chord up to C. So now I have the third of my two six chord and the root of my five chord. So now I need to put in my G. That's the root of your two six chord. And then I'm also going to need a D. So we have a complete two chord. Now, since this is in first inversion, we're actually going to double the bass. Remember with first inversion chords, we tend to double the bass. So we're not going to double the root or the fifth. We're actually doubling the third in this case. And that's okay because it is a two, six chord. Since it's in first inversion, that's allowed. So now I need to fill in my five chord. For the five chord, you should double the bass. So let's go ahead and do that. You look at all your options and you know that you want the upper voices to move contrary to the bass. So even though it may be tempting to go up to a C there, we don't want to do that because then we have parallel motion between the bass. So let's take a look at that for a moment. If I go from B flat to C and I have B flat to C in the bass, that is parallel octaves. Can't do that. So this is not an option for us. So the C, the next best option to move in stepwise motion would be the D moving down to C. So now we have a unique situation here because we have the C, but we also need an E and a G. So it doesn't make sense for this B flat to jump up or down to E. So we know that's not right. And it makes more sense for the G to come down to the C. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So now we've got C and E, we just need a G. So the only other voice is here in the soprano, so we put our G there. So that's essentially how you create your four chord or your two chord. Now I will tell you, the two chord moving to five is pretty much always going to be in first inversion. That's the most common way to do it. So we're not gonna deal with a two chord in your position. These are your resolutions. You can either have a four chord, can be major or minor, or a two chord. And with a two six chord, just make sure you double the bass. 